right, I think uh, being mindful of everyone's time pressures. So from me, Dave Cohen, the General Manager of the Cybertech Institute of Australia, I would uh, like uh, to welcome you all for joining us. And uh, thank you for joining us and uh, welcome you to our open day this afternoon. It's a great pleasure to have you join us. But before we get going, I would like to, on behalf of the Cybertech Institute of Australia, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which we operate and to pay our respects to the elders past, present and future. So since our last open day, we are pleased to announce that we've made significant strides forward in uh, what has appeared to be a very busy year at CTIA. Um, besides the programs receiving national accreditation, cyber being one of them, our cert for in cybersecurity, we've established our mark in the women in cyber and tech space and having run a most successful woman in tech webinar attracting international women at the top of their game on our speaking panel. Our brand new Cyber Mums brand is alive and well and very excited to start kicking goals, creating awareness for um, mums and providing them with skills who previously thought that a career in cyber was, well, hoodies, dungeons and basements. So being out and about and in the trade at uh, trade uh, expos and employment expos, it's always a treat to be speaking to students face to face. Keep an eye on our, keep an eye out on our socials for when we will be coming to your area um, as there are expos coming up in the next sort of 12 months uh, in every state in Australia. So we'd love to connect with you in person there. And then our weekly newsletter has gained a ton of momentum with heaps of useful information containing industry uh, trends, employment opportunities, and of course, everything that's going on at CTIA. If you're not subscribed to our mailing list, you need to be. Amanda, if you wouldn't mind, will you just pop the subscribe link into the Q&A box and uh, you can all click on the link to subscribe to our weekly newsletter. So being a live event, unfortunately, you won't be able to come on mic to directly ask questions. So please post your questions in the Q&A box and uh, throughout the session, we'll be referring to them and we'll try and get to as many of the questions as we uh, as we're possibly able to. So now, without any further ado, let's get the show on the road. So the lineup for today is taking over the mic from me is our lead trainer, Sean Finn, who has a wealth of experience and knowledge and expertise in the cyber industry with over 20 years of experience in the industry. Sean has a keen eye on defense, aviation and mining. Taking over from Sean will be uh, Nadav Nachmias, followed by um, our very own Chris Douglas. And then we will circle back to me to discuss some ind industry trends, uh, followed by the final section of Q&A. As I mentioned a second ago, we can now put a face to our speakers um, with uh, Sean Nadav, who is the head of the cybersecurity program at while we were tech in Israel, uh, the program material that you will learn as you go through the program. And uh, Chris, being part of the risk to solution group of companies, we're very fortunate to have Chris, our general manager of uh, training and education for the entire risk to solutions group, who will make sure that you are well looked after throughout the duration of the program and the standards of the program are maintained to its highest levels. So with that in mind, Sean, would you like to take control and take over from here? Hi, thanks very much, Dave. I, I think that picture of me is a little bit outdated. I don't have the big beard anymore, so I might need to send you a new one. And I think everyone else has gotten a bigger beard than me. So thanks very much for the introduction. Uh, G'day, everyone. My name's Sean Finn. I'm uh, one of the cyber trainers for the Cyber Security Analyst Program. And today I'd like to introduce the, the, the program to you. So why have we set up this program? The Cybersecurity Analyst Program was created by the Cybertech Institute of Australia as a response to industry demand. And uh, we, we had a look out there in industry, figured out uh, what, what the demand for cyber was, and then we, we went looking for content for that demand. And we, we're going to have a look at all of those different things today. 
So what's out, what's out there? Um, what can we do? So there's there's an estimated 7,000 new direct jobs needed in cybersecurity by 2024. And I, I think another recent projection uh, that we haven't captured on the slide is that we, we have 30,000 jobs needed by 2025. So there's an absolute explosion in demand for cybersecurity jobs. The uh, cybersecurity workforce has grown by more than 23% in the, uh, in the last year alone. Uh, and uh, there, there's more and more jobs needed as time goes on uh, to, to, to fill those gaps. So the more jobs we create, the even more jobs that, that, are, that are being created out there. And 43% of cybersecurity workers can fully carry out their job responsibilities while working remotely, uh, with one third not required to be on site. So not only have we got more jobs, we've got lots more jobs out there that are able to be done remotely uh, from home or from other different sites, so that it opens up our the the, the, the like the the workforce in other locations apart from capital cities that we might have had before. So we've got more jobs. We need more people. There's uh, increasing demand of almost being able to work from anywhere and uh, we still can't find enough people. So that, that's, a, that's a huge gap there. And women in cybersecurity have increased 10% since 2015. We need to be encouraging this a lot more. There, there's a lot more people out there needed to, in, in the cybersecurity workforce and we need to be able to be drawing on all pools uh, out there. So we, we strongly encourage uh, participation uh, everywhere by all genders. So if we want to if we want to get ahead of this curve, um, what do we have to do? Uh, we, we have to reskill people across into tech. There's just not enough there. An average full-time salary in Australia for uh, a, for a tech worker or just a general worker is $68,000. But for a cybersecurity analyst, the, the average is 110,000. So, so it's uh, almost half again. So there's huge demand, huge shortage of jobs, greater, ge greater geographic locations that you can work for. We're paying lots more money as an industry and yet we still can't fill the positions. So that's a, there's a huge opportunity there and it's a growing opportunity. So that, that's the why. Now, if we have a look, uh, on, on average, 50% of hiring managers don't believe that applicants are well qualified for cybersecurity roles. 16% of employers state that it takes six months or more to fill uh, new cybersecurity positions and 71% of companies expect cybersecurity budgets to increase in the next three years. So, so if we have a look at that, um, more than half of hiring managers don't think there's enough skills out there. Uh, takes more than six months to, to fill these positions uh, and um, more, more than two thirds, 71% of companies expect those budgets to grow. So there's an increasing demand and, and shortage being exhibited in the marketplace. So, so what did we do? Uh, uh, the Cybertech Institute of Australia look, looked for this content. We thought, what's the best uh, way we can, we can upskill people? Where, where's the best content? Where can we get it from? And a worldwide search was conducted and uh, Wawewa, Wawewa was identified. Wawewa, Wawewa is based in Israel. They're a producer of uh, cybersecurity uh, content training content, uh, not just in cybersecurity, but in other development as well, and have put through tens of thousands of students globally through through their cybersecurity programs. The content's already well proven, already established and being used. And the, some of the features of their, their ready to go training packages include train the local trainers. I know that uh, before I take a class, I have a session once a fortnight with the with the trainers themselves to go through all of the content and all of the material to make sure I've got everything I need and I understand all the material and I can ask them, the, the, the head lecturers, the, the creators of the content, uh, what everything means. And, and uh, that way I'm not just interpreting it, I'm getting the, the same information that uh, all of those tens of thousands of people globally have had access to and being able to deliver that to the class. So that, that's the local train the trainers program. Our trainers are trained by uh, while well, we were tech, the, the 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 creators of this content. The program materials are absolutely top notch. There's uh, lecture content. Um, there are online labs that we can interact with. There are exercises that we go through and we've got a, a great learning uh, management portal as well that we access it through so that we can go back uh, again and again and review that content as, as we're doing our learning. The, the cyber labs are second to none. Uh, some of them, uh, there's Windows labs, there's Linux labs, there's ones you can access through the web browser. It's all got all the tech toys, I won't go into it, but uh, more on that later. Uh, 
And um, we've also got projects that bring it all together. So part of the, the, the content, I don't want to spoil the content for you, but it starts at the very beginning, try, can train people up from, you know, what's a computer, what's a CPU, right through to uh, uh, cyber warfare, uh, explo exploitation and protection. So it's the entire spectrum and it's really cool. Uh, um, and when you graduate, you'll be part of while well, we was global alumni of technical professionals. Now, what does a cybersecurity analyst do? What are the job roles and responsibilities? A cybersecurity security analyst works with the company to monitor and fight threats to its an organization's information technology and operational technology infrastructures. The daily tasks of a cybersecurity analyst might include working with Linux, uh, managing network system security, that could include monitoring security access, performing security assessments, and conducting security audits. Could be managing network infrastructures. It could be identifying the cause of security breaches and also updating the company's uh, disaster and uh, recovery and response plans. The, the program overview, it's a nine month program part-time. There's 350 academic hours that, that you need to spend going through the content uh, and, and upskilling. You'll develop knowledge of Microsoft and Linux operating systems, firewalls, information security, and cybersecurity. You'll gain access, uh, you'll gain skills in problem solving and teamwork through hands-on exercises. So through accessing these labs, uh, you, you actually get to not, not just learn it, but you get to practice it. You get to do it and run through the exercises. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So it's, it's heaps of fun. And in the final bring it together part of the program, you'll demonstrate everything you've learned to show you really are ready for a new exciting job in the tech industry. As Sean has stated earlier, um, and Sean, you actually call this um, a lot of, um, I think toys was the word you've been using for, for what it is that uh, we have in, uh, in, um, uh, in them, in, in the different curriculum that we're going to present at the moment. And it is nice because these are actually toys and I have never referred to them as this kind of term, but it actually is making it even more exciting to think that one of the most important thing for us, and we'll see it up next, is the practicality of things. So yes, there's theory and uh, yes, there's need to learn and to uh, um, um, uh, basically learn new things and a lot of the theoretical aspects. But one of the things or the key things that we're putting our efforts into are the practical endeavors that we expect people to actually uh, uh, um, take on with them from the course. So um, whether it's toys or whether it's going to be labs or it's going to be practical tools and practical uh, mechanisms, uh, there's going to be a lot of it. So going through the curriculum, I just want to point out that this particular program is trying to deal with all those gaps and shortages in skills and capacities that Sean has stated before. Now, don't take Sean words for it. Don't take my word for it. Just go to Google and just look for cybersecurity gap cybersecurity skills gap, cybersecurity work gap, and you will notice yourself that the numbers are not really in favor of having too many people. On the contrary, we don't have enough. And the problem is that the um, issues that arise with not having enough people and uh, not having enough uh, uh, um, sk skills uh, people for those kind of jobs is actually only intensifying whatever it is we are handling and dealing on a daily basis. This program uh, being so long and so full of very interesting topic is meant to take you into a next step from coming into the world of IT and cybersecurity as having sort of a minimum uh, uh, background, um, you know, operating a computer and knowing what a computer does inside uh, your home network. And we are trying to bring you up to date with um, uh, uh, the, the basic knowledges that we have defined that are required for you to become a cybersecurity analyst. Now, it should be looked upon as something that is an entry sort of course, um, a long entry sort of course, but at the end of it, we're looking at becoming a cybersecurity analyst and we should probably just discuss in a few words what this role really is. Practically, what we're looking at is sort of like an internship job in which we want people to maintain what happens in security operation centers. We want people to develop the needed skills further along the road beyond the scope of this course to better understand world of malware analysis and cyber forensics um, and um, um, 
being able to handle incident response. So um, where we're going to start at is going to be the world of IT. One of the most important things that we have learned over the last few years is that the word cyber cannot yet exist anymore just as a buzzword. So it's nice because cybersecurity is appealing. Sean just showed us the numbers that we can also look in Google and see ourselves it is very appealing, but cyber doesn't stand on its own. If we look at it as sort of like universal versus a private case, we cannot venture into the world of cybersecurity without understanding what IT is. And the main focal point of the course, at least in its first phase, is to give its learners the basic idea of what are those computer systems, computer networks, the operating systems and those networks that are actually needed to uh, um, maintain a functional organization. As IT becomes um, a serious bottleneck in many organizations, it's already a business process of its own. Cybersecurity has become a business process of its own. We have to base our understanding of what the IT world really is. And then just knowing your computer and your home network just don't cut it anymore. We need to raise the level of understanding, beginning with operating systems, moving towards networking, and then only then we can move on to the next uh, uh, phases. Um, doing the shift between phase one and phase two, doing the shift between the world of IT, uh, creating a common language and creating common understanding of what IT really is, um, we make a slight sort of like a turn into what most people will probably refer to as just, well, cyber is about firewalls and information security. And we're using this sort of like as a leap to better slide into the world of cyber security as we are approaching the world of cyber security incidents. So we are adding a bit more from the world of IT, not yet diving into cyber security as a whole. We are still uh, uh, in line in um, understanding what uh, the purposes of IT are and the various uh, um, contents that are being taught through IT. So for example, we want to go through automation because in the future, in the next phase of the course, when we go into cybersecurity, automation is going to become a very crucial part of our daily lives. So through PowerShell and a little bit through Linux and through Bash scripting, we are going to leverage just a little bit more of our IT understanding into the fields of automation. And then comes the next uh, uh, phase of the course in which we are discussing cybersecurity. And right here, you see a list of topics that are going to be pushed inside roughly half of the course as it is presented today. And you have to understand something. Like I said earlier, cyber has become sort of like a buzzword. I want to be a malware analyst. I want to be a cybersecurity forensics investigator. And it's not just taking a walk in the park and I'm becoming one. It's not just going online and learning what cyber forensics is. Uh, on the contrary, those topics are really advanced topics that require both the skills, the capabilities, and the capacity to uh, um, uh, um, learn new materials and learn new skills through time and experience. So we can teach some basics and we can provide you practical experiences. And by the way, you do get those experiences through the toys that Sean has mentioned earlier, but it is more about understanding that there's a long path in front of you that you need to develop. And this is what we're trying to base in this part of the course. We are giving an introduction to the world of cybersecurity incident response, handling and response. We are basing an understanding of what a SOC is doing and what a cybersecurity analyst is expected to do within a SOC from the beginning of simply performing triage phases. So we are trying to prioritize what it is that is under, uh, 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 that is required uh, um, reaction from us at the moment. And through more additional and advanced phases, including forensics and malware analysis. But word of caution, we are not going to become malware analysts out of this course. We are just giving you the taste of what it is that you can take through your uh, career development as uh, uh, you finish the course and you move on towards uh, uh, more advanced topics. One of the most important things that Sean has referred to is the toys. Um, and it is pretty important for me to emphasize this. First of all, we see that practice is as important as theory but we cannot just maintain a course by theory alone. But here's the problem. 
Whenever we're coming into a practical endeavor that requires IT systems, it can be as much as just a simple computer, or in that sense, we will refer to this later as just a virtual machine. And it can be something that is very resource consuming, something that will consume your time in installing and configuring and troubleshooting, just as I had with the microphone as we began our chat today. And it is okay as long as it is part of our pedagogical way. So if this current course or current session we're having is about a particular installation, you will go through the installation head on, click all the next, next buttons until you understand what is going on. But when the next session arrives and you need the same systems, but now you are troubleshooting and continuously troubleshooting through the course, you're wasting valuable times. And this is where those virtual labs come into, uh, uh, into play. In the beginning, you will probably be the one going through all the headaches of uh, establishing your own labs, but this would probably be for just a few sessions. Once you go through the headaches and you understand what those headaches means, we leverage you to those virtual labs in which you do not go through those headaches anymore. You let us handle with those headaches and you make sure that you are doing what is expected of you. Time is not supposed to be uh, wasted on licensing. Time is not supposed to be wasted on next, next, next phases. And this is one of the most important aspects of the courses, especially as you reach the cybersecurity deep dive, where there we need everything to be ready for you for work. The only thing you need to remember is that you don't even need a special resource for this. You just need to have an internet connection and just a pretty modern computer. Everything is hosted in the cloud. Everything is in a, a SaaS software as a service kind of model. You just need to log in and everything is presented to you through a remote session. No need for sophisticated resources and no need for sophisticated installation or uh, licenses. Again, outside the scope of what you have to do in order to uh, get just a taste of those headaches. So just a uh, word to sum up on my part of this. Um, the one important thing that uh, I happened to learn in the last few years, including the COVID pandemic and, and before, and I use it quite cynically, but I hope you will uh, uh, see where I'm going with this. There's a constant sense of kind of mediocrity when it comes to providing cyber services. So everybody wants the job because look at the numbers Sean just gave you. Wow, this is an impressive salary. And well, there's a skills gap, so and there's a work shortage, so you actually have somewhere to barge into. But then many times and many different endeavors are not really making it to the point of providing professional services because, well, cyber is simple, right? You just go on an online course and that's it. You're ready to tackle the cyber problems of the day. And it doesn't work this way. This course is pretty packed with a lot of information, with a lot of practices, with a lot of sessions that are meant to guide you through a pathway that, by the way, you alone take. So yes, you have an instructor and somebody to lead with you and help you and teach you and provide you with information, but enabling this information to register, making a value out of it, is actually entirely up to you. We can only provide you with information, the tools, and really helpful platform to do this, but you're the one expected to actually leverage this into your daily operations. And beyond the scope of the course, we are trying to open as many possible advancement doors as we can, including the last list of topics that you've seen that we're providing as a brief introduction to the world of forensics, malware analysis, or more advanced cybersecurity fields. And it is entirely up to you to make this through a mediocre situation of just calling cyber cyber and actually making it into a professional thing that will bridge the skills that Sean has stated before. This is from my end. Um, Dave, back to you. Wow, that was incredible. Nadav, thank you. I really appreciate the time that you've taken to come on and uh, take us through the program. Um, exceptionally an interesting program. Um, I could sit and talk about it all day. But uh, I'd like to now hand over to uh, our very own Chris. Chris, if you wouldn't mind taking over and uh, taking us through how we will look after our students. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, speaking as head of uh, R2S's uh, training and education, so I look after the entire organization's training and education from a compliance standpoint. Um, so I'm just going to run you through the prerequisites and that sort of stuff in regards to our administrative process. So it's quite simple. Just moving through here. So prerequisites right here. 
We've got our first part there, which is no prior tech or programming experience. So this is very important for a lot of people. In order to be admitted into the CTIA analyst course, however, we need to know that you're capable of doing certain things, and that's testing logic, precision, and methodological um, abilities that we're going to test. So we do that through an assessment tool. It's computer-based, again, so it's, it's working within the field. The test itself takes about an hour. It's quite easy to sort of move through, um, and, and you will have um, some guidance there as well as you move through the testing. Now, the dedicated self, the dedicated test itself includes general reasoning, data control, and verbal instruction comprehension. So actually being able to understand what's being applied here, because that's a big part of the whole learning process is your, your basic learning, listening, writing, that sort of stuff. Um, there are some minimum requirements, however, in regards to your system. So this is going to help you operate um, better within the program, and that's to have a computer running on Windows 10, have at least 8 gig of RAM and 2.8 gigahertz processor with a minimum internet bandwidth of 10 meg per second. So there's some technical specs for you. Um, I'm sure that the tech guys will be able to walk you through that more so, but that's your standard computer nowadays. So basically, if you've got a laptop that's been produced in the last three years, you've probably got those specs already. So don't be stressing too much about that one. The upcoming program for the uh, Cyber Security Analyst, which is the CERT 4 program. So that's CERT 4 accredited program in Australia. Um, our start date for that one is the 29th of September. Now, the lesson plan, as it's projected, will be starting at 5.30 p.m. and finishing at 9.30 p.m. That's Tuesdays and Thursdays, so it's two days a week. Then you'll have expected learnings outside of that as well. So you'd be expected to do some self-paced learning there as well outside that. The expected graduation day or date would be within July next year. So it is a nine-month program, and this is a, the reason behind it is that it is a fully compliant program. So we've got standards there that we have to adhere to. Will you get a job after you've done this training? Well, we work with you to provide you with some of the best um, industry um, feed-ins. So we can actually get you alongside there and um, help you with your CV, that sort of stuff, anything that you're interested in in regards to it. We can also guide you along the pathway there. So. As you can see here, over 70% of our graduates find a job within their profession within two months of graduation. So basically, get the qualification, we walk you through the process, and then you should have a job if you're committed to that. Big thing is, it comes back to that learning process. If you apply yourself there, get the accreditation, then you're ready to rock. So on completion, once you've completed your program, you'll be issued one of these really flash looking certificates. They're probably one of the better looking certificates out there I've seen. And trust me, I've seen a lot of certificates over the year. Um, the program graduate receives a graduation certificate as long as a lifelong membership with Wa Wiwa's alumni community. So you basically got constant industry feedback there, which is really important to stay on top of the things there. The certificate, along with your hands-on experience and final bit project, so a bit's one of your learning processes there, helps you get hired by companies in dire need for cyber professionals. It's a recognised shortage in Australia, and that's why there's that, that all out push for people within the industry to get accredited and get qualified. Of course, as you can see down the bottom here, you've got that nationally recognised training. So it is V approved, and it is a fully recognised national qualification that you can take to any employer in Australia and have that training recognised. Moving along here, the investment. So your investment in yourself here is basically $7,696.50, okay? So with that, that covers everything from your live classes, your labs, your student kits, hands-on experience, your learning support that we will provide to you, and again, that interaction with YWEWA's global alumni community. Now, there's several different ways you can pay. Of course, you can always pay up front, but then you can also pay through these payment supplementation programs through ZipPay or Zephy. So those ones, again, they're programs that once we start moving through the enrolment process, we can actually inform you about those ones even further. Um, 
your expected investment is additional 100 hours of homework outside of the eight hours that you do per week with us. So there's, there's a fair commitment from your side, but when you look at a standard um, cert for course, um, when it's applied, you're essentially nine months full time to 12 months full time. So this is a great alternative for people who are generally working um, and requiring industry experience, that sort of thing along the ways. So thanks very much. Uh, that's pretty much everything from my side, Dave, in regards to the compliance standpoint. I'll hand back over to you, mate. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Chris. As uh, usual, that was fantastic and there was a great overview. Mindful of everyone's time, there's just a lot of information that we wanted to pack into a very short space of time. So, but I just wanted to briefly touch what a career and where the market is sort of heading with a career. So we've touched on various aspects of it and we know that technology is advancing a lot quicker than cyber capabilities are keeping up with that technolo technological advancement. Businesses are obviously uh, uh, very focused on growing their businesses, on developing greater market share, developing new streamlined, technologically advanced capabilities to do certain things. But obviously that's happening a lot quicker than we're creating cyber capabilities for, which leaves the industry even more vulnerable than where it is at the moment. It's very important that we get many more cybersecurity professionals trained up in the industry as we possibly can. Now, as we go through the, um, the career, there are many, many options. I'm not going to thrash out all the stats for you again. We can see what the stats are. Gender diversity, as I alluded to in the very beginning, is very, very low. There's a very high demand for women to get into cybersecurity, which we need um, tremendously. From that, as Chris alluded to earlier, that pre-program assessment, the cognitive reasoning, the general skills, that we are that we are required. So now this is from a markets perspective and also from a leadership perspective, which I'll get to in a second. But from a market perspective, whether you decide on whether you want to go into cybersecurity as a career or not, the future of the world that we're living in, in the mo at the moment is technology driven. Whether you're in marketing, whether you're in finance, whether you're in law, no matter what medicine, no matter what field you're getting into, your field is going to be driven by technology at some stage. So if you want to future-proof your career, you are going to need to have some kind of cyber capability accompanying the skill for the job that you want to apply for. So if you're applying for a job and you have a cyber capability attached to the role that you're applying for and the other person does not, I guarantee you, you will get the role ahead of the other person because you are essentially deemed as more knowledgeable and more understanding of a cyber capability. And people are an organization's greatest vulnerability, yet opportunity to protect the organization from a particular breach. So. I repeat, whether you're planning on going on to, into a career in cybersecurity or merely another career, get a cyber capability, it's going to be the bread and butter of, um, of, of careers going forward. And again, this stat on the market, the, the, the leadership insights are even worse. And it speaks for itself because we don't have enough people in cybersecurity, which means we have, don't have enough people to progress in cybersecurity. As the gents uh, spoke to earlier, that cybersecurity is a skills oriented profession, not only a knowledge oriented profession. So in order to progress your career in cybersecurity, you need skills to be able to work in the industry. So in order to progress your career in cybersecurity, you need a balance of skills and knowledge. But in order to progress, it's your skills that is gonna get you over the line going forward. Now, what does a career in cybersecurity essentially look like? A career in cybersecurity can take on very many forms. This is not a blueprint. This is merely an idea of what a career in cyber could look like. As Nadav alluded to earlier, 
you're not going to start off as a forensics investigator or as a pen tester or an ethical hacker. You need a solid foundation. You need a solid base to be able to protect, to, to be able to uh, carry on your career in cybersecurity. So I often refer to a career in cybersecurity as a medical profession pathway. So you start off your medical profession as a GP or a doctor, and you are able to diagnose general things and you're able to diagnose and identify certain things. But then in order to go further than that, you then pass the, 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 the pain point onto the next professional, whether it be a cardiologist or a neurologist or a podiatrist or a pediatric uh, a surgeon. It's the same sort of theory in cybersecurity. You'll start your career as a cybersecurity analyst, and then you'll decide which aspect of cybersecurity particularly interests you, whether it's analysis, whether it's threat hunting, whether it's um, forensics, whether it's pen testing, whichever career you choose to go into, into cybersecurity. And your career as businesses develop, and your career is not limited to the IT department. Cybersecurity is not an IT problem, it's a business problem, which means that a career will be evolving. This roadmap and this snapshot of a roadmap that we have in front of us, I am almost prepared to bet my life on that in five years time will look totally different because of the advancements that are happening in, in, in technology. And a lot of the jobs that are gonna be available in five years time in our profession of cybersecurity aren't even listed here because at this stage of the game, we don't even know what they are. But if you want to get your skin in the game, start somewhere, and that is at a cybersecurity analyst. Moving on. As Chris mentioned, we're gonna help you. We're not gonna just educate you and leave you to your own devices. We want you to succeed. We are a solutions-driven organization, and the solution that we want to provide is to individuals to gain a career, to businesses to find a solution to their problem, and to individuals to protect their livelihoods, that they don't suffer a breach, that it doesn't shut their business down, that there isn't reputational damage or harm to uh, individuals and organizations, multi-generational businesses, second and third generation businesses, um, a, a trade secrets being exposed. All of these are solutions to problems which we want to help fix. So we will help you, as Chris mentioned, we'll help you with your CV. We have an advisory panel, which I consider as cyber royalty, which are all industry champions, which uh, um, offer employment to candidates within our uh, cohort. They identify talent within the cohort. They can off potentially offer internships. They can potentially offer employment. And we're being a connected uh, organization, connect you to, to, to recruiting bodies, to organizations, there is a massive, massive shortage in this industry. You are not going to suffer to find uh, to find work. But get yourself out there. I'm also the chairman of the uh, Institute of Strategic Risk Management Cyber Special Interest Group, which is a global platform for like-minded individuals to get together, to have discussions, to raise um, to raise uh, points, relevant points, and to also, it's a fantastic opportunity for you to connect with people on a global platform so that we're not just isolated in the Australian confines. Because as we know, cyber knows no borders. But, uh, one of the questions that have come through, um, do the does the 30% the discount apply to New Zealand students? The answer to that is yes, it does. Um, the course is is uh, the course fee is ten thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars. And to Chris's point, uh, we are offering a thirty percent discount on the next cohort, which brings the price down to seven thousand six hundred and ninety six dollars and fifty cents, and that will be extended to New Zealand students as well. So, without any further ado, I would like to say thank you all for giving of your time to Chris, to Nadav, to Sean. Thank you very much for giving of your time. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. And if there are any questions that you'd like to address after the chat is closed, please head on to our website. Amanda, if you wouldn't mind dropping the website address into the Q&A box, it is cyber-tech.institute. It's got all the information that you need to know. Please reach out to us for any other questions. 
Thank you and have a wonderful evening.